Good morning, family. Good morning. Good morning. Today is Wednesday, July 10th, 2024. I am back with another episode. Thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And as y'all know, I haven't I haven't said it, I haven't been saying it enough lately about my email address, bigwatermyyahoo.com. If you have some topics or something you want me to discuss, or you have a question you would like to ask, you may not want a video on it. If you want a video, I will make a video about it. Or you just want to ask me a question, I'll answer your question. That's what my email is for. Not to get me saved. Okay? I told you I'm trying to stay out of politics and religion, but I've been drawn back into politics. It looks like I'm going to be drawn back into religion, whether I want to or not. You know who you are emailing me about get my life to Jesus, say, you know, I ain't got no problem with nobody doing in their private life, your religion, your belief. Y'all know my belief. I've explained it to you. I'm transparent. <clears throat> I'm a, I ain't got to keep explaining that. My relationship with God between me and God, right? I appreciate you, but my email is not for that. I've I've heard the spiel about, you know, accept Jesus. I didn't hear all that, okay? If God want me to do that, I'll do it. He'll make it clear with me. And if he do, I'll report back to y'all that God told Not you, but God told me to do that. And I'm going to be for real with it. If I become that, a Christian, what have you, I'm going to be for real with it, and y'all will know it's real. You're going to know it ain't fake if I do. You ain't going to have to come, I ain't going to have to go in your email address and, and be trying to talk y'all into converting over to Jesus. Y'all going to know, y'all going to see me and want to be a Christian because you're going to know it's real then. That's how I'm supposed to be. People are supposed to be able to look at you and say, I want to be like that. You don't have to give them a, a six-paragraph soliloquy or what have you about why they should convert over to Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. But I'm looking at you and I want to be like you. Most of the, Some of the worst people I know are Christians. Some of the biggest cheaters on their wives and husbands I know are cheaters. I mean, are, are Christians. And, and other stuff that we non-Christians or so-called heathens do, the Christians doing it too. Address that. Go to you Christians out there that want to convert me uh, or try to get me saved or what have you. Y'all need to work on each other first before y'all come worry about the heathens. Us out here, you know, us no good people. The people that ain't, that's us sinners. Y'all need to worry about y'all first. Y'all ain't got it right. Why y'all out here trying to convert me and others? Look at yourself first. Look in, within your own house. Look into your own church. It's enough of y'all in there that need some some saving. Some of y'all, it didn't take the first time when y'all were saved. Or you got baptized and saved and filled the Holy Ghost. It didn't take like a bad S curl. It didn't take. Y'all remember back in the day when you were getting them S curl? You know, black people nap hell. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You get the S curl and it wouldn't take. I, my, that's why I'm bald now because I had a bad grade of hair. My S curl never would take. I'd be getting in my house, still be napping. But anyway, a lot of y'all Christianity didn't take. Jesus didn't get in on the first time. Y'all tried to get Jesus inside of your heart. He didn't get in there. So y'all need to be focusing on that, not Big Ward. Y'all need to be in the church focusing on getting some of them people in there that they think they saved, that ain't saved. Get them saved first before y'all come out here trying to convert us. Work on y'all self first. Because the majority of people that be trying to tell me to get saved, they don't be saved. Or whatever you call say. I'm, I'll be seeing y'all. But anyway, on to the topic. But no disrespect, though. I, don't mean, I know y'all mean no harm. I'm just, just getting that clear. My, my email for business. You know, and every now and then a beautiful woman is sending me an email trying to holler. You know what I'm saying? That's flattery. Even though I ain't trying to do nothing. You know what I'm saying? But I appreciate that, too. But, mm. but anyway, on to the topic. America, America, America. Land that I love. I want to ask y'all a question. 
We saw the debates. We talk about the president we have now. Let's just forget about the other guy. We just gonna focus on the one we got now. And we know about the the job as president of the United States, how stressful a job that is, how hard it is. We've seen presidents in the past go in looking young, Bill Clinton, uh, Bush, President Barack Obama, Ronald Reagan, every last one of them. They go in looking young, whether they do four years, and the majority of presidents have done eight years. There's only been like a couple of one-term presidents. But anyway, the majority of presidents, if you look back over here, most of them have been two terms. So eight years later, they go in looking young, eight years later, that job then aged them by 20 to 30 years as far as their appearance. The stress, the way it then broke them down, how tough, and the things that they have to see and do and go through as president of the United States, things that they know and see that we don't know. That they probably had to be experienced. Damn, I didn't know it was like that. And it probably does something to their spirit, to their mind, to their heart. And it breaks them down and ages them. It stresses them. They, 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 you see them when they come out, how old they look. So, and those are the ones that go in young with sound minds. Strong, scrapping bucks. They come out looking a mess. Now, you going to tell me that that same job hasn't had that same effect on this old, extremely old guy we got in there now who has dementia, allegedly. He's suffering from dementia, y'all. He's in the early stages. I heard through the grapevine, allegedly, that a, a doc, one of them top doctors had been visiting the White House over the last, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back and get that for you, over the last year or so, a, about eight to ten times, a dementia doctor back and forth to the White House. Well known. I'm, I'm going to get you that story. I wasn't planning on doing that for this one. But the man has something going on up here, which ain't nothing wrong that we all get old. But he's not aging well. He's not. That job is hard on a strong, able-bodied, sound-minded person. What you think is doing for him? And he want to go four more. Well, let me tell you this. Let me ask you this. Who's been running the country? Here we got a man can't put together a complete sentence just for a debate. Something that politicians have been doing their whole career. They do it like the back of their hands. That wasn't his, that wasn't me or you up there debating in front of the world. This was a seasoned politician who's been doing it for decades. Up there looking like an amateur. Didn't know what he was doing. Lost. Didn't know where he was at. Didn't know what he was saying. Couldn't remember his last two words. And he's running the most powerful country in the world. You think he is? You think he, you really believe that? He's not running America. That man, that bumbling idiot we just saw up on, I ain't gonna call that man no idiot. Forgive me, Lord, and forgive me, Mr. President. You're not an idiot. You're a man suffering from a mental issue. I'm gonna take that back. He's not an idiot. He's a racist, but he's not an idiot. He's a very smart man, but he ain't got it no more, is what I'm saying. He once was a smart man, very calculative, evil man. Yeah, a lot of you black Democrats don't want to accept that because he's a Democrat. He was an evil dude. I know I got a lot of some videos I'm going to bring out about him, some of his past. I'm going to show you the clips and proof of everything because you ain't going to believe it. His affiliation with Klan members, Robert Byrd, look him up, Google it. Grand Cyclops, or Cyclops, whatever, the Ku Klux Klan, but he retired when he became a senator, you know, he had to. But he opposed all types of civil rights leg legislation. That was uh, Mr. Biden's homeboy, mentor, and friend. Look it up. Google it. So, I'm not going to call him an idiot, but he's suffering from mental decline, severe mental decline 
Ain't no way you're gonna tell me that the, the, the office of the presidency have aged and beat down and stressed out all them other younger, stronger presidents that didn't have any mental issues, but he handled it just fine in the condition that we all know he's in. I was just having a coat, man. You lose your mind is dwindling. You have you suffering from one of those the, whatever, the, the dementia, Alzheimer's, whatever. He's he, it's right there in front of you, people. This ain't about Trump. This is about him only, Mr. Biden. He has not been running this country for the last four years. America is on autopilot. We don't know who the hell driving. It's not him. But then again, if you look at the condition we're in, maybe it is him. But I don't think so. He ain't this stupid. He know better than this. To have us in the condition we in now, weak around the world, economy is in the tank. People are hating each other more than ever. Some ain't right with that man. That is a the hardest job in the world. And you mean to tell me that man right there that needs somebody who, to, to, to guide him around. That man that said he ain't doing no more meetings after 8 o'clock because he got to get some sleep. You mean to tell me that's the man that's running our military. That's the man that's making split second decisions on our future. That's the man that's having to make split second decisions about what to do about Vladimir Putin, Kim Jong-un, Chi over there in China. Whatever, his, not Chi, but Chi. Well, Chi in China too, but his name Chi. It's a lot of Chi and Chins in China. That was racist, wasn't it? But anyway, I ain't mean to be. Strike that from the record. There's no way you're going to tell me a man in his condition, his mental condition. It ain't got nothing to do with his age. His mental condition ain't there. It's gone. He needs to be somewhere. I wouldn't trust him to drive a car. I wouldn't trust him to drive. He's at the point, at the stage now, if he was your grandfather, you wouldn't let him drive. You would take his keys. But yet he's driving America, supposedly, allegedly driving America. America's on autopilot. America is driving itself or being driven right off a cliff. America with Joe Biden at the wheel is that old man on the interstate doing 20 miles an hour and rush hour traffic. Not rush hour traffic. When traffic on the interstate, you zoom, zoom, zoom. That old man over there in the interstate doing 20 miles an hour in the fast lane. That's Joe Biden in America right now. And the rest of the world just zoom, 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 zoom. And, he'll, and this is Joe Biden. You know, y'all done seen him. This is us right now on the interstate with Joe Biden as America. 20 mile an hour on the interstate. Car just <laughs> fly by him, just shit rocking his car. Car just zoom, zoom. Joe Biden in America, USA. Russia, China, everybody just blowing passes. We're in the interstate on the, on the left lane doing 20. 20 mile an hour. Y'all know that old man and that old lady on the interstate. And you saying to yourself, that's dangerous. Somebody needs to take their keys. That's us right now with Joe Biden at the wheel. He's driving like this. That's us right now. Even if you don't like Trump. This ain't about Trump. It's about that dude. It's about him only. 
I'm not a lover of Trump. I'm not a Trump bootlegger, this net. I'm knowing what I'm seeing with this guy. We got to have, with this job, where we at right now, we got to have somebody sharp. Who's been running the country? You're not going to tell me it's been this dude. That he been, somebody. It, it might be one of the interns, for all we know. Uh, sir, uh, Mr. Biden, sir, uh, let's play Madden, the new Madden's out, sir. <laughs> you want to play? Who knows what they're doing in the back, uh, behind the scenes? While America's burning down. <sighs> All this time. I finally got to a point, and a lot of us probably can relate to what I'm saying, right? It's a lot of people out here hurting right now, struggling, doing bad. But it's a lot of people, listen to me if you're one of them people who just finally got yourself together over the last few years or whatever, things looking good for you, starting to look up for you, and now here it is, the whole world will come crumbling down. You have finally got yourself together, now America plummeting. When America was doing good, you were fucked up. I was fucked up. We're doing too good. Now America's doing terrible. Now I'm doing all right. But how long that gonna last if the whole country doing bad? Now I'm doing good and the world wanna end. I don't wanna see that happen. I don't wanna wait till I finally got the way I'm doing all right in life and my country is in this crapper. Because we keep choosing poor leadership. We keep allowing them to divide us. We keep falling for the old banana in the tailpipe. Being hoodwinked. Bamboozled. Ran them up. Led astray. Malcolm X. We, the people, are the only hope America has to survive. If that been the case, we're done. We're done. They've dumbed us down for so long with our education system. Liberalism has made us so dumb and stupid and weak we're no longer able to fight back. And the few of us that are still able and willing and strong enough to fight back, y'all label us crazy, racist, stupid, wicked, evil, heartless, because we want to fight back. We see what's going on. I was one of them. You just call them white folk racist. Them January 6th folk, them folk idiots, them folks, I, I start, start realizing, hold on, something ain't right here. Something ain't right. We steady on the downfall, steady on the decline. Y'all, I don't have to keep preaching that. I don't have to keep saying that. It's, it's plain as day. We on autopilot, baby. We're not being led. We're not being driven around by a competent leader that know where they're going. We're everybody confident and we know we in good hands. We on a charter bus right now and the, the driver of that bitch drunk. And vomiting. And farting and pooping on himself. While we on a family vacation on this big ass 56 seat charter bus. That bitch just swerving on the interstate. We just, ow! Everybody, oh, Lord, big one, help us. I'm scared too, shit. That's what's going on with us right now. The driver drunk. And he too goddamn old and senile. We gotta fix this one, y'all. We got to fix this cause you can't get out. Down goes America, down goes the world. I heard somebody saying, but well, they just going to leave. 
where you're going. If America falls, the world falls. Everybody tied into America. China can't afford for us to fall. Russia can't afford for us to fall. The world cannot afford for the United States to fall. The whole world is tied into us. That's why they hate us. That's why they're coming up with all, trying to come up with these different types of currencies and different things so they can break away from not needing us because they know we we falling. And if we fall, they fall. Everybody tied into us. You ever, the World Trade Center is here. Why is the World Trade Center in America? Because we are the world. No Michael Jackson. So goes America, so goes the world. The world is in shambles because America is in shambles. America get itself together, the world will have itself together. I promise you. So ain't no need of y'all talking about getting out, going somewhere else, you know, you know, you America haters, F America. They ain't never care about black people, no way. Leave then. Go somewhere else. Go to Africa. Like them redneck boys you say back in there, go back to Africa. And see what happened. You'll find out them Africans hate our land too. Not all of them. So you my African brothers that support the channel. Don't come here to We don't hate you, big boy. Some of y'all do. I didn't heard them right here. Spend the ones over here. So we gotta fix America, y'all. We ain't got nowhere to go. I don't wanna go nowhere. I done came too far here now. We done been through too much now to let it go. To let it in because some blind loyalty to some damn party instead of being loyal to your damn country. Don't be loyal to no damn party or no person. Be loyal to your family, to your country. This is all we got. Get it? Got it? Good. Bye.